Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. We have the privilege today to be joined by Clint Gallion, who is in his second season with the Wayland Baptist Pioneers. And coach, your team has been top, picked at the top of the Sooner Athletic Conference for the 22-23 campaign. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, but right now let's give a little bit of an introduction into where you are. You're coming off a season in which Wayland Baptist was 19 and 13 overall, 13 and 9 in Sooner Athletic Conference play. Take us through last year and where you are coming into your second year. You know, I tell people all the time, last year was a pretty um, rough year for, for coaches and players included. I got the job um, in August, you know, right when school was starting, uh, kind of in the first week of school. And so, uh, you know, I had to leave my team at Central Baptist and then, you know, coming here to Wayland, um, you know, their coach, uh, I, I, I didn't recruit the guys that were here. And so it was important for me to, to recruit the guys that, that we had here. And, uh, you know, I had to learn on the fly and they had to learn on the fly. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, like you said, we were 19 and 13. We actually had two COVID forfeits and then two other games we only played with uh, – with four varsity players due to COVID. And um, and so four of those losses, um, you know, everybody in the country was still going through the COVID. So hopefully we're over that. Um, but yeah, we ended up, you know, making a run at the end, won 11 out of 14 and, and made it to the conference finals last year. Coach, and I, I appreciate you saying that too. I know that uh, it seemed like the entire country from an athletic perspective has gone through a lot in the last couple of years. I believe we are past that, and, and I look forward to being able to talk more about just solely basketball. I appreciated your work with the Mustangs. Had a chance to visit with you a couple of times at Central Baptist and now seeing what you're doing in West Texas as well. Uh, you bring back some good players. Uh, you're leading the way among those, Parrish Hewitt, Hewitt uh, a senior, and another senior in R.J. Mason. Yes, sir. Um, so we actually brought both of them in. Th those are the two guys I was able to bring in late uh, last year. Um, two really good players, two good leaders that have really stepped up uh, the, in the year that they've been with us. They've both grown tremendously off off the court um, as leaders, and that's just going to help their game get better and help their teammates uh, really improve. Combined for nearly 32 points per game. I mean, that's that's obviously has to be a big deal. You all are picked at the top of the Sooner Athletic Conference. Again, we're visiting with Coach Clint Gallion from Wayland Baptist. And Coach, just with that in mind, uh, what's it like then to to then prepare? You're coming off a season, as you mentioned, uh, you know, with a couple of losses, probably not to to your credit, but they they happen nonetheless. You finish fourth in league play, but the uh, the coaches seem to think that there's something happening. You know, unfortunately, preseason uh, rankings and standings don't uh, mean anything. I've never won anybody any trophies, but uh, it is an honor. Um, it shows, you know, the respect that the coaches have for our program and and for the players that we have and the players we have coming in. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't help you win any games. You know, the only thing it does is put a target on your back. Uh, you know, you like Nick Saban says all the time, you know, to his team, it's like rat poison. You know, don't eat it. You know, you, you can uh, – you know, if, if you look at that and and, and want to, you know, gloat in, in preseason number one, then then you're definitely not going to finish in the top. You know, that's our goal. That's our expectations. And so we're not going to shy away from it. Um, but it is an honor. And, you know, that, that means, you know, non-conference and conference, we're going to have to bring it every game. You know, everybody's going to be, you know, coming after us. And, um, you know, it's just another challenge we're going to have to overcome. We talked about Hewitt and Mason coming back uh, among some newcomers. Tedrick Wolf comes over, and and he actually was a member of your program there when you were at uh, Central Baptist too. Among those who are coming back to play or coming on to be a part of the team this year, yeah, we think we have a great group of returners. But then uh, you know it was a goal of ours to go get more athletic and and go get more depth. Uh, and so, you know, Tedrick obviously helps with that. Um, you know, it's a unique story. I, I'm getting to coach him again at a different place. Um, you know, Ted's one of uh, one of the closest players I've been with. You know, I recruited him from, from Coffeeville, and he came over and played uh, played for me for two years at CBC. Uh, was all uh, honorable mention All American his last year there. And so, obviously, he's a really good player. But uh, me and him have a really close relationship, and. It's, it's going to be, uh, you know, I really wanted to get him back in school. Um, you know, he's going to be able to graduate here. and uh, But then also have another year to, to go compete for a conference and national championship. Coach, you were talking about being hired in August, and I know that, that that is not much time really to get your feet under you at a program because, I mean, you're looking right into getting the start of the school year and uh, getting to 
implement your program. And I, I, you mentioned that. How do you feel about where you are now with a, a year under your belt? Uh, you feel like the program is established and, and going, uh, you know, every coach wants to put his own fingerprint on that. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we're in a good place right now. Obviously, it's not not ever perfect, and and you're constantly working to to build your program, build your culture. Um, but you know, I, I was in a lucky spot that the culture was in a good spot when I got here. Um, the players that that I inherited um, were really good players, uh, came from really good families, and so uh, you know there wasn't much uh, that I had to to force there. And so our goal was just you know we were really young. And so kind of what we had to do is go get some older players. And we did that in the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, we're about half half returners, half newcomers. And, you know, most of our newcomers, uh, we, we signed one high school kid and, and the rest were transfers. Uh, we needed to get older to compete in the sack and, and to compete nationally. Coach, would you take us through a couple of those younger players as well? I mean, you do bring back some a couple of sophomores in particular in McDougal and Udo you know, that come back to be a part of that team. Tell us about a couple of those younger players that you've already had. You know, we had three freshmen that played a lot of minutes last year. Um, two of them were COVID freshmen, um, so they got their COVID year back, and so they were you know, basically redshirt freshmen. That was uh, Thad, Thad Udo, who was honorable mention all-conference, really good player for us. Um, you know, usually plays plays the four, five, um, six, five, really athletic, um, and then a really good defender. And then Jackson Reeser, who's who's grown a lot um, this last year, um, and over the summer he's, he he came and stayed a month over the summer and and really worked on his body and his game. Um, and then, like you said, Dylan McDougal was on the all conference uh, all, all freshman team this last year, um, true freshman out of out of Moore, Oklahoma. Um, and he's he's one of those guys that, you know, he got minutes as a freshman because he understood his role and, and he played really hard and, and, and was one of our best defenders. Um, but he's took his you know offensive game to the next level. And so we're looking forward to, to having him back. I appreciate you saying that, Coach, too. I, I, everyone has a role, and uh, when we all recognize our role, I, I think the team plays more flu fluidly. Again, top pick uh, heading into the season in 22-23, according to Sooner Athletic Conference coaches in the preseason poll, but you get things underway in the end of October with some non-conference games, some pre-conference games, if you will. Four straight games to open the season, Coach, and you get things underway against Dallas Christian. Yeah, it's always good to have some home games to start the year. Um, you know, we love playing in front of our home crowd. Uh, we always had a great home court advantage and a great home home record when I was at CBC. And then we did last year as well. We, we only lost two games at home last year. And, uh, you know, we're going to do a lot of a lot of different things to try to get fans in the, in the stands to, to give us that advantage. But that Dallas Christian game actually got canceled. Uh, they didn't want to play us. I guess they saw um, – you know, they got a new coach and, uh, you know, he didn't want to honor the contract. So we actually rescheduled. Uh, we're playing LSU Shreveport, who will be a top 15, top 10 team in the country. Um, we're playing them December 19th. So we got to add that to our schedule. We just got that confirmed uh, late this last week. Um, and so our home opener will actually be November 4th against uh, University of the Southwest, who we sp split with us last year. And so, um, you know, we got to be, be ready to go and, and uh, prepared for that game. All right. The Wayland Baptist men's basketball team picked atop the Sooner Athletic Conference preseason poll. Coach Clint Gallion, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Success to you all this season. We look forward to following you all here on Midwest Sportsnet. Joey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it.